Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about failing gracefully. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what does failing gracefully mean when you build an application? So it can mean a few things, but in essence what it means is that you find a way to have an issue with the system without it being a complete catastrophe for everybody involved. That's the nice way of saying it. I think it's even the technical way of saying it. To f f to avoid foobar situations. And so there are many, many ways depending on the size of system. I mean everything from like everything that th this principle applies not just to web it applies to a lot of different things because uh, it's uh, it's sort of blast control or damage control if that makes sense when you, when the bomb squad takes care of like an explosive or something like that they might have to do a controlled detonation of the thing like they have to let it blow up but they do so in a secure manner it's a very similar sort of problem that you're dealing with or the same principle is very much the same a concrete example would be, let's say that you have a web application that crashes. Well, if it crashes, it might be f possible for you to save certain parts of it, like you might be able to show a helpful error message instead of just showing you, you know, that screen or cannot connect to a server. It might be very, it might be possible for you to just show a message saying that hey this error happened or that error happened just stand by we're gonna fix it that would be an example or an even better solution if you work in say front-end land uh, react like error boundaries or things like that where you might have different visual components on an interface whereas let's say some part of the of the interface breaks well then maybe instead of just breaking the whole page and showing an error screen you could just isolate one component and let that break and show an error in that one space but the rest of the application is still functioning in a microservices uh, situation that's actually one of the benefits or one of the perceived benefits with microservices where one uh, one service might fall from the cluster of things that you are running that might be failing and you want to fix it but that then at the very least all the other things are still working it doesn't help you of course all that much if that service is the only thing that you can access that is going to help you with whatever you need right but that i hope that that makes sense but uh, because the worst case scenario would be if the whole system goes down nothing works planes same sort of thing right being able to do an, an emergency landing is a graceful uh, uh, failing gracefully uh, if you compare it to crashing and killing everybody uh, it's exactly the same principle and there are many different techniques uh, for how to do this uh, myself like if I give want to give you some concrete examples the UI thing is one version of that so I'm a big believer in graceful degradation of interfaces so uh, one of the projects that I've been working on is like a internal system like a dashboard type of thing where you have many of these different like metric widgets um, and like different tables and the graphs and things like that that show the health of different systems and allows administrators at the company to you know check on orders product deliveries schedules stuff like that right and so in that scenario all of these sorts of like the, the it's almost it's not micro front ends but it's uh, all these visual elements they are usually mapped one to one to some type of back end microservice because we have a lot of these different systems right and so in that scenario we isolate things so that each of these visual components is their own little contained application type of thing or rather it's a, it's not exactly in a, its own application but if it does break if something happens on the back end there's only that part that breaks you see an error message saying that hey this thing broke please contact the support staff or like the developers because something's not right but all the other dials and knobs and dashboards and like all the stuff that they have right is still going to continue working if it is possible and the same thing goes when we load those pages each of them are like working asynchronously from each other so you don't have to like depend on a single point of failure such as having a one single endpoint 
point that gets all the data for the entire dashboard because if something then goes bad on the back end well what's going to happen is that then the whole page goes down even though it might just be one system of all of these microservices that is broken and then of course another one is uh, uh, that you might have uh, a feature flagging or things like that you might have an outage something might go go really really bad and it might break and if that happens well it's really useful for you to be able to figure out where, what the problem is and maybe you can segment once again control the blast radius and say all right let's just shut off this page or this feature or this thing that is out there in the wild in production or whatever until we can fix the problem because that way you can still use the rest of everything and you know so forth and so forth but you can also have like fallbacks this is also different types of uh, failing gracefully where you uh, something goes wrong or something unexpected happens and you show a default of some sort and so forth this is it that might be a little bit dangerous um, depending on situation but I hope that you sort of understand what I'm going for that it, it it's sort of what what can you recover from and what can can you control the impact of something going wrong with the running system that is what failing gracefully basically means so what I want you to take away from this is that failing gracefully is a very good thing you have to be careful with it because sometimes people go too far and they start to like impl implement like really weird redundancies so one of my favorite examples is that if you if you it's called failing silent, failing silently, which is a very bad thing. The classic one that people have mentally is, oh, you create a try catch about something, and then you empty, you create a l empty catch clause or catch block, because that way something can go wrong in in your system, but you will never know that it happened. Another way of thinking about that is when you do defaults, where if something happens that is unforeseen, and you show some type of default message to kind of hide the fact that something went wrong. Well, that's that is a form of graceful failing because the user is not the wiser. But at the same time, now you might find that, and this happens to me all the time, the user goes, "But wait a minute! Wait a minute! I didn't expect that thing because you're. It's basically caching, and it's a, it's a form of caching because you're showing a value that is not the expected value, and then that causes like confusion. And now it's actually harder for you to figure out what went wrong than if you showed that something went wrong, like an error or something like that. So it's always a bit of a balancing act when f with failing gracefully, because sometimes you want things to crash." and sometimes you want to try to recover but it's really important for you to understand how to when to pick one over the other and in many cases the best thing for you to think about is okay let's crash let's fail or like throw an error or something like that but if I do so can I do so in a way that doesn't you know make the whole thing go down but maybe I can just isolate the problem in a way where I can figure out very quickly what the problem is and still allow other features to continue working while I work on that problem have a great day